Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. After redoing my tech corner setup, which is behind me here, we're gonna get stuck in and actually use it. I did a channel poll where I asked whether you guys wanna see a video on the iMac G4 or the 2012 iMac 21.5 inch behind me. And overwhelmingly, you guys wanna see me upgrade the RAM and airport card in the iMac G4 15 inch. As I mentioned in the last video, the iMac G4 only has 256 megabytes of RAM. It's dual booting Mac OS 9 and 10.4 Tiger. Under OS 9, a quarter of a gig is okay, but under Tiger, you do feel the strain a bit. I'm not sure how far I'll be able to upgrade it with the RAM I've got on hand at the moment, but we will be able to get that airport card in there. Let's get into it, shall we? So here's the iMac G4, and if we go to Apple about this Mac, you can see that we've only got 256 megabytes of RAM. If we go into more info and open system profiler, under the memory setting, you can see we've got two bays. One has the 256 stick and the other one is empty. So let's shut it down and see what we're dealing with. Setting the iMac safely down onto something soft here, we can get to the base of the machine, which is where you open it from. There are four Phillips screws on the base and they're captive screws as well, meaning that they'll stay with the base plate and don't fall out. Here we have a single RAM slot that's not a full size DIMM, that lives behind the four Torx screws that you can see there. We're not going to be upgrading the full size DIMM today because I don't have one to hand, but that does hold up to a 512 megabyte stick. In the smaller slot here I'm just going to install what I have to hand, which is another 256 megabyte stick, bringing the total up to half a gigabyte, or 512 megabytes. For the airport card then, over here we have my iBook G3 clamshell, and I'm going to pilfer the airport card from here. On these machines the keyboard comes off really easily, there's just two little tabs at the top and it pops the keyboard right off. Underneath the keyboard you can see here we've got the airport card, and trying not to damage the ribbon cable for the keyboard here, we can pop out the airport card using the metal retention spring. And installing it in the iMac G4 is super easy, you literally just slide it into the slot and attach the antenna cable. And then with the base plate back on, we can boot up the iMac to see if it's all working. Attempting to join my normal Wi-Fi at home didn't work, and that's because the security I've got on there is far too modern for this machine. I hoped that wouldn't be the case, but I did kind of expect it. So I'm going to set up Wi-Fi sharing on my 2010 MacBook by plugging it into Ethernet and sharing that via the Wi-Fi. I'm also selecting no security for that as well, because the other options for security are all too modern. And it's not liking it at all. On a whim, I decided I'd boot into Mac OS 9 and see if that would make a difference. And as you can see here, it's not working either. I then decided to boot back into Mac OS 10.4 Tiger and correct the date and time. Maybe that was the issue, but it still doesn't like the network. I'm not entirely sure why that is, because for a network with zero security, there shouldn't be any issue. And I have definitely successfully done this in the past. Oh well, might be about time to break out that original airport device I've got, hey? That's a bit of a bummer. So that was partially a success. We've got the RAM upgraded to 512 megabytes, which is as much RAM as I have to hand at the moment. I think that little slot will take a 512 stick and so will the internal slot, but I don't have those to hand at the moment and doubling the RAM in this machine, bringing it up to 512 megabytes will make a huge difference. But I really wanted to use this machine as my retro software downloading machine. It's not the fault of the airport card though. It's the fact that the security on my home network and on my 2010 MacBook is too modern. I'm not sure why it's not connecting to my MacBook when I select zero security on the Wi-Fi sharing. As you can see, I tried to correct the date and time to see if maybe that was it. So I'm a bit stumped on that one. I've done some Googling and I can't seem to find anything. What I'll probably end up doing is just Ethernet sharing from the iMac behind me or using a home plug. Either way, it'll be fine. I'll get internet onto there if it kills me. And that's exactly what I plan to do with this machine. It'll be my Macintosh repository download machine. And then I can either burn software onto CDs using the internal drive or use my USB floppy drive for my PowerBook 145B. So that's a bit of a brief video for you today, but that's where we've got to. Hope you enjoyed it anyway. And let me know in the comments down below if you've got any idea why it wouldn't connect to the network with no security, because that doesn't make any sense to me. In the next video, I'll be upgrading the 5400 RPM spinning disc in the more modern iMac behind me to an SSD. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.